It is the Riot Podcast. Hello and welcome to Fat Tuesday. Mardi Gras. Shrove Tuesday. Pancake Tuesday. As we learn in the show that there's a lot of different terms for it. There's so much. Like, Uh, I didn't know about the pancake stuff until uh you said that today. Really? I've never seen pancakes. You never heard the pancakes. I've only heard of the the pancake stuff for, like, the pancake breakfast. Uh Uh-huh. But that's a Ash Wednesday or a Lent thing, right? Yeah, I think I think that's it's leading up, right? I don't know. I don't even know that much. I just always associated pancakes with with, that. with uh, this time of year. I feel like there's way more food uh, related things to days and like rules and stuff yeah. that we just never just knew. Just from of. other countries and other cultures, we have no idea about. Mm. You know, you know what? Uh, the best one. I'm not going to spoil it, but the best term for today comes from Iceland, and you'll hear about it later in the podcast. (laughs) So enjoy that. Isaiah's with us, of course. Thank you guys for doing the show yesterday while I was not in. Oh, it was so great. We had fun. It was (laughs) such a great Monday. Was it a good bro show, or did you guys branch out? What did we even talk about yesterday? I don't even remember. (laughs) Marvel movies. Yeah. Um, Typical, you know, pretty wide array of things. Which is also kind of what we we talk about today, so it's not that different. Well, we do talk about the Morbius trailer, the final last, like, new one. Yep. And then we also talk about uh, the Batman, so that's coming out. I think we have theaters having it start Wednesday night. Yeah, so uh, I'm looking forward to definitely getting out and seeing that one in the theaters. It's just I'm going to need to, I think I might need to take a vacation day to go see it because it's so long. <laughs> oh, yeah. You need to take Isaiah with you. You guys both I know. Go. You need to do it for the show. You want me to watch it? Yes, I don't I do. really want to watch it. it can, why? If it was for work, would you watch it? Not watch it. I won't like watch got- it if you pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and the yeah, IC. We could go. And next- the IC. <laughs> <laughs> we could go next Tuesday. It would cost work $10 or oh, yeah, 15 that's not if bad. you want to come. Nick. That's you worth it. some popcorn. <laughs> yeah, a little popcorn and icy in there. I mean, obviously, I'll bring in like my own Twizzlers and things. I'll oh, hide a couple snacks. Sneak those in. Well, yeah. I, I always feel like for movies, if I'm not totally crazy about it, if I go see it in theater, I feel better about it. Yeah. Uh, because it's more fun. Fun just yeah. going to the movies. That's why the theaters I'm are so on important. Things that stream more. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, if I go to the movie theater, then it feels like a special event, uh-huh. and so I'm more likely to like the movie. Yeah. I'm way more into it. The flip side of the coin is, if it's a movie that sucks in theaters. At home, if you're watching a movie and it sucks, you can just turn it off. In the theater, <laughs> it feels like you're throwing money straight into the garbage oh, with Hudson, all the popcorn. No, you go back out to the candy section, you get something else. Yeah. You go back in the theater. You just find, keep buying food until the movie's yes, good. Yes, <laughs> you wander around, which reminds me, maybe save this for the show tomorrow. We need to talk about Isaiah sneaking candy in, because I heard him say that. Yeah. I, I mean, everybody sneaks candy in. Well, so. You don't admit it. What do you mean you don't admit it? <laughs> Not at the theater, but on the <laughs> podcast you do. <laughs> you Listen. Know, They'll never to. know. <laughs> you should like have heard what role. Nene admitted to yesterday at lunch. What did he uh, admit? Uh, well, maybe it should have its own time or not be said. Mm, I'll just say it. He was uh, illegally streaming a movie. He was? He was. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. We would never. <laughs> Perish the thought. Perish the thought. <laughs> What's worse too is you're just you're taking all the candy that you and you're just going home and illegally streaming them. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Nothing but lies. All right. Well, let's let's hear some positive things about this podcast. Sure. Yeah, we talked about uh, animal dreaming mm-hmm. and how I didn't really understand the concept, or I, I guess I understood the concept. I didn't understand why we we went the dreaming route and not the thinking route. But uh, my dog Jim does not dream that I know of. I've you never noticed. Seen Jim. And happy yeah. birthday to Jim today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Today's Jim's birthday. Why, we're supposed to be talking about co- uh, happy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Positive today's stuff. Jim's birthday. Jim's birthday. So that's a big thing for him today. We're going to have a special day later on. We'll talk about that a little bit. But yeah, we talked about everybody's dogs dreaming and what they're what they're dreaming about and how I'm I'm struggling with my with my dreams recently. Did, mm. did you know that Jim shares a birthday apparently with Justin Bieber? Aww. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Or actually, <laughs> Justin Bieber shares his birthday. <laughs> I guess that's true. That's a better way to put that. Yeah. Well, enjoy the podcast today. It is Fat Tuesday, so we're supposed to do an after show in a little bit. So when you're done with the podcast, please make sure you follow us at Radio U Riot on Facebook or our YouTube channel so you can catch our after shows and see what we came up with. Indeed. And we will catch you next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Two is better than one. Unless we're talking about the riot. The riot. Radio U. Well, looky here. I don't want to be billed as the 
dinosaur conspiracy theorist guy. <laughs> but you are. <laughs> but when I see stories like this and I have to share them, it sure makes it more and more like that's what I'm going to be billed as. Well, last week there was news about this uh, new dinosaur yeah. that was like a T-Rex, but, you know, the T-Rex has like the smaller arms. Right. Uh, but this has like such small arms that it's almost no arms. Yeah. And they were just talking about that. And then Hudson just brought up, how do we know? Um, what do we know? Maybe there's no such thing. Yeah. Or All I'm saying is, hey. Maybe dinosaurs did exist as we imagine them. Mm -hmm. Or Or, maybe scientists are just making it all up. Maybe they're just finding bones, putting them together however they want to, and be like, wow, this one would look cool, wouldn't it? Looks good. Let's let's call it a T-Rex. How do we even know where they're finding these bones? They're they're real bones. We don't need, I mean, mean, there probably are, but do we know? I just think, here's what, what it all comes down to. I think there's a lot easier things to believe that people question, sure. and yet we don't question di- Everybody's on the same page with dinosaurs. Well, except for me. Now we know that Hudson questions, uh-huh. and so that's just led this thing, and, this, and now there's more news. Just more reason for me to question. A group of researchers is now proposing, you know, the Tyrannosaurus, the T-Rex, arguably the most famous of all dinosaurs. Now they're saying that uh, the Tyrannosaurus isn't a Tyrannosaurus. What is they're it? They're saying, when is a Tyrannosaurus not a Tyrannosaurus? It's when it stops being right. a Tyrannosaurus. There's, <laughs> there's, now they're saying, as instead of having, you know, we just think of the T-Rex. Yeah. There, that The T-Rex is actually three different dinosaurs. They, uh, they've they split it up now. T-Rex means Tyrant Lizard King, but uh, because of some fossils that they've found, uh, they are now splitting up the Tyrannosaurus distinction into T-Rex T Imperator, which means Tyrant Lizard, lizard Emperor, mm-hmm. and T Regina, which means Tyrant Lizard Queen. Mm. So there's three different. So, in other words, they are just making it all up. It does seem like they're adding more confusion. Yeah, I thought we settled because the in the article it said like the Tyrannosaurus was first described uh-huh. in 1905. Yeah. And now, 117 years later, all of a sudden, we're like, hold on, (laughs) hold everything. We think we mixed something up in 1905. And the other thing this means is, if you ask a child, or a child tells you, uh, that my favorite animal, my favorite dinosaur was a, is a Tyrannosaurus. Oh, please don't be that way. You need to say no. which type of Tyrannosaurus. The <laughs> Rex, the Imperator, or the Regina. They are good, good at giving these things cool names. Well, why don't that. you instead say the Emperor, the Lizard Queen, or the uh, the, the main... Lizard King. Yeah, yeah the Lizard King. I like but that. Please don't be the grown up that ruins that <laughs> for kids who just call it a T Rex. It's teaching the kids need to learn it's how you need to learn about this made up stuff i think (laughs) the problem is when we're ready to teach someone we have too much fun and meanness when we're teaching them uh to correct uh you know what the truth is the kid the kid will have an answer for me and he'll tell me i'm pronouncing it wrong too (laughs) we would say rate and review the podcast but uh let's be honest that would probably hurt more than hell the worst of the riot podcast uh carol allison She's 74 years old. She grew up in the Philippines, but uh, she has since, she had a grandmother in Scotland. Uh, She came to visit Scotland when she was six years old. Her grandmother uh, helped her open a bank account. In Scotland? In Scotland, when uh, when this woman was six years old. So, So she's now 74. So what's that, 68 years later? Yeah. 68 years later, she stumbled across... That she still has this bank account. Oh, really? She forgot about it all this time. And there's money in it? She, there was. So when she uh, did the deposit back in 19-whatever, uh, when she was six years old, 68 years ago, it was $3.35. She just checked back in uh, with this bank. It's called TSB. It is uh, now appreciated to three hundred and thirty-five dollars. Oh, I thought Listen you would have to told that. me more. What do you mean? I know any money's good, especially if you weren't expecting it. Uh-huh. But I guess I, after so many years, I thought that would be a better that a better. Her rate. money has appreciated one hundred times. It's not enough. What it originally was. I know. <laughs> I just. If, I know you're. I just. If you had five hundred dollars, this would be like five hundred. No. $50,000? I don't know. You know I'm not good with numbers. I know. That's it's, why it's better we don't. But, we don't bring it up. <laughs> it, uh, it would be 
Yeah, fifty thousand dollars. If you had five hundred, so this is the dream right here. I know. So this is, it, is what they tell you to do. Is this what is this brought to you by Big Bank, where they're yeah, trying to get us that's to open right. an account? This is financial freedom right here. Mm-hmm. You, th- th- this is how you're supposed to live. You put your money in the bank. You don't live for sixty years. You put yourself in a coma, then 60 years later, you have a little bit of money. Uh, you're right. It's it that does, easy. It does sound like financial freedom is so close. Yeah. <laughs> so all you close. have to do is not spend money for 60, years, Great. and all of a sudden, you'll have money. <laughs> you're right. It sounds wonderful. It's a real lesson right here. Well, it's, it is exciting, but I'm surprised. One, the bank is still there. Uh, oh, yeah, 100%. That's shocking. And I would have assumed that if a bank account was inactive for like decades, yeah. that maybe they would, uh, you would think, right? pause the money. Either that, or I was thinking, like, you deposit $3.35 in a bank account now, Mm -hmm. and you just leave it. They're taking that out for fees. You owe them money. I know. By the end of it. (laughs) By the end of a year. (laughs) Forget about after 60 years. They're saying that uh, she did this, I think it was 1969 with the grandmother. $3.35 when she was six years old. Mm -hmm. It was the trustee savings bank, which has now been changed to TSB. Shortened it up. She said, uh, the woman said she was really pleased. And she thanked her grandmother under her breath. Oh, nice! When they told her that she had, uh, you know, earned all that money. So, are we supposed to lesson learned? Uh, save money, uh-huh. I guess. And are we supposed to be looking for bank books? <laughs> what are we looking <laughs> yeah, for? Yeah, search around. Search around your uh, grandmother's place. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe you can, yeah, search around your parents' attic or something. Maybe they have some old uh, bank account information that you can use for your own purposes. There could be money somewhere. Yeah. Hudson sees the glass is half empty. But get this. He thinks a glass half empty is good. The Riot Radio U. Happy Fat Tuesday to you, or whatever you call it. Yeah. What I'm learning is there's other names for Fat Tuesday, even, that I didn't realize. There's other names. Like for here or in different countries? Uh, No, here, yeah, because a lot of people call it, and I like this one I was aware of, but I forgot about Shrove Tuesday. Is uh, and some people just call it Pancake Day. So what I have here is a uh, is a list of a bunch of different uh, Fat Tuesday pre Lenten treats. Because here's another thing: you you keep bringing up the pooch keys. Yeah. And uh, before I came to radio, you. If you said Poonchki to me, I'd be like, what the heck are you uh, talking about? What's that? Yeah, so I didn't I didn't really uh, register with me, but now reading more about it, of course, uh, different areas of the United States and different countries around the world have different traditions, different uh, food that they would eat before uh, for Fat Tuesday or even a little slightly earlier in the week uh, for this time of year. They all have the different uh, own traditions. They all seem heartier, though. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them are very unique, too. So, obviously, uh, Poonchkis is what we've been talking about. That is That has Polish origins, so that's why it's a bigger thing in the Midwest, uh, where Poonchkis, and a lot of them are, are variations of this, is just a, a powdered... Uh, deep fried donut, and uh, for Poonchkis in this case, it is filled with uh, jelly. Mm-hmm. Now, the other one that's more probably well known is king cake, uh, and of course, that's a Louisiana type tradition. Then, so the one I grew up with is called Fashnox. Okay. Which, uh, and by the way, all of these are probably pronouncing wrong. <laughs> don't even, don't correct <laughs> don't, us. Don't, it's fine. We're, we're just radio broadcasters. No, it's fine. Pushki should be fine. Yeah. That is, it doesn't look like it yeah. with how it's spelled. But well, it's I think the Polish. Many traditional years Polish. of having to hear that over and over again yeah. around this time. So. Uh, Fashnox is a German, it's of German origin. It is very similar to a Pushki. It is, there's three types of Fashnox. One made with yeast, one made with baking powder, one made with potatoes and yeast. And uh, there are... Uh, I have never seen that before. You've never seen that? See, no. that's where I grew up. Uh, those are Pe- uh, Pennsylvania Dutch mm. origins uh, and German as well. So I grew up in Maryland, right near that area. Uh, in Sweden, they have something called Semla, which is another... Uh, it is a donut, a sweet bun laced with cardamom. And filled with almond paste and cream. Uh, here's a good one. In Iceland, they celebrate what they call Bursting Day. Okay. They eat salted lamb. Oh, no thanks. And, Go uh, back to the donuts. But, but, well, listen to this, though. You might like this. They call it Bursting Day because you eat to the point of bursting. Uh, all right. Well, 
that's fine. Yeah, so maybe you can have some salted oh, lamb and that's some donuts. Any Tuesday. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Doesn't have to be Fat Tuesday for that. Yeah, I like this one uh, for Romanian traditions. They have what they call Cheese Fair Sunday. So obviously that'd be this past Sunday. And they have something called papanasi, which is a cottage cheese dumpling. Oh, well, it no, looks it looks good. good. No, it looked good until I realized that's cottage cheese and not icing what, on it. You don't it. like cottage cheese? No. What? Hands raised. Who likes cheese? I mean, I don't just cheese? eat it plain, but cottage cheese, it has its uses. That's for sure. Pancakes are a tradition. Are- trash. What? <laughs> Oh my gosh. It lines the trash can. Nikki is a cottage cheese hater. Wow. Oh gosh. Why would you think I'd like cottage cheese? Why would you? Who doesn't like cottage cheese? Again, let's have a quick hands raised. <laughs> who likes cottage cheese? You have to, if you go on keto or whatever, you have to learn to love cottage oh, cheese. Oh, no. Uh, nope. let's, what else is there? There's a good this... Greek yogurt will be all right. Oh, bl- <laughs> See, I'll, I'll say the no to the Greek yogurt. Uh, what is this? Bliny? That's the Russian. Uh, the Russian tradition, which, what is a, it's a Russian crepe. Uh, they're not just crepes, though. They're topped with caviar, smoked salmon, sour cream, onions, or sugary toppings. All right. Okay. And then last but not least, we have something called Nelinishki, and that's Ukrainian for Cheese Fair Sunday. And that is crepes rolled up with cottage cheese. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I could go for that, especially I, we missed Cheese Fair Sunday. I wish I wish I knew we could be celebrating Cheese Fair Sunday and Fat Tuesday. See, I never celebrated any of that growing up. Uh-huh. It was only when I started in radio that yeah. people were like, oh, yeah, you need to do something for Fat well, Tuesday. Well, you got to eat something. You have to have something today. Any excuse to eat something. This is The Riot. Radio U. Isaiah was just telling us that he doesn't have dreams anymore. Not that I don't have them anymore. I just haven't had a dream in a very long time. Are you worried? So that means you don't have, as far as we know, you don't have them anymore. I do. Yeah, exactly. I guess you're right. I guess I don't have them anymore. And so I was like, what the? What does that mean? Because I've also never seen Jim dream. So maybe it's like an us thing because he's never it like moved to his sleep. And I haven't had a dream in a very long what time. What if? Uh, what if you're in a house? It's haunted or something. It's a curse. <laughs> Have Actually, no dreams. Now, Hudson, yeah. I think maybe they're not sleeping enough. Like, they mm. don't sleep long enough at night to get into the sleep cycle. But I Googled it for you because we were talking about um, they're trying to analyze uh, when your pets or dogs or rats and stuff horses, like dreams. Horses, uh, So, for this, they say that if you're actually getting sleep, you don't need to be concerned. Oh, Okay. But, but if you are not getting enough quality see- sleep, mm. that actually might be the problem. Uh-huh. It could be the sign of physical or a mental health problem uh, or your overall health that there might be an issue if you're not sleeping good enough to dream. See, I just don't think I'm sleeping long enough to dream. Cause I Which means like you're over... not sleeping good enough. Yeah, yeah I guess that's true. Because like, also I go through the thing of like, I've got Jim in the bed with me, letting him out like in the middle of the night and stuff. Mm. I make it, and I, on average, I would say I get like a little bit under six hours of sleep a night, probably like f- uh, between five and a half and six hours, yeah. which isn't terrible. But at the same time, I'm not getting like any. I haven't got eight hours of sleep in like I don't, months. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you need to get Since eight hours you of sleep dreams though. Last? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Probably. I thought eight hours was like the golden standard. That used to be like I wanted to get eight hours so bad, and now I just can't. Yeah, but do now it. you're an adult. And adults don't get that much. <laughs> you, don't ah. get, you don't get eight hours of sleep until you retire. Especially mm. when you do a morning show. Yeah, You're not definitely. getting well, Yeah, when you wake up so early, that's why I get like five five or so hours of sleep. And when was the last time? How much how, how much sleep do you guys get at night? Uh, no, about that same amount. About but I, I dream. Oh, but I you dream? dream I dream. Do you, mm. Now, what about you guys? I have dreams. And I'll remember in the morning, or like, you know, I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh, I was just having a dream. Yeah. But I don't remember it whatsoever. Sure. Even, even if it's something, I'll, it's weird that you remember in the moment, oh, this was an interesting dream. I wish I could recall this later, and then later you can't. Does that happen to you? I can usually recall most of you it. You can? Yeah. Wow, you have a good memory in your sleep. <laughs> it's stuck in there. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I'd be a little concerned that if it doesn't, if you don't dream, let's put a marker on it. Let's say in two months you haven't had a dream. In two months? <laughs> I miss dreaming. It's always the best when you wake up from a really good dream and you can remember sure. it, then you uh, run it back, you know. Oh, man. See, well, my they, dreams always seem to frustrate me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Then those are nightmares. You're just, like, not good enough in your dream? Or, like, no, what's happening just, there? I'll tell you what used to happen a lot, that uh, I would fall asleep on the couch. This is, like, years ago. Not as much now. Now I don't, I, I, I'm telling you. I have dreams. I don't remember a lot about them at all. 
but I used to always, I'd fall asleep on the couch. I'd come home from work, fall asleep on the couch, and I'd have like ESPN on or something, Mm -hmm. and it'd be like Skip Bayless or whoever arguing. And so I'd be having a dream where I'm hanging out with the people on ESPN, (laughs) and I could hear them on the TV. Yeah. And so they're talking, and they're arguing about whatever, and all I wanted to do was torn in with my opinion. Oh, wow. And since Sit it was a couch. TV show, I never got a chance. I never got a Sit chance. It couch, wasn't a break Justin. for me to t- say what I thought about the Charlotte Hornets. Never got a chance. Oh, well, now I can see you being frustrated with I'm that. I'm still frustrated <laughs> about it all these years later. So, so saying, that's why I stopped watching. If you want to get a better quality sleep, you know, avoid caffeine, especially a few hours before bedtime. Aerobic exercise. Go to bed at the same time. Get up at the same time. Mm. No screens in the bedroom. Do something relaxing and an hour before you go to bed. Or take a nap on the couch with ESPN on. <laughs> it's a good See, way to do it. Work. If you're looking for hot takes on the day's most important news stories, uh, you're in the wrong place. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. You guys ever wonder, you ever watch your dogs or your cat, you, Nikki, you've got a cat, you ever wonder uh, what they're dreaming about? Oh, when they're doing the shaking, like... They Yeah, their legs are moving around yeah. and stuff like that. I always wake them up. <laughs> yeah, I actually... Uh, I'll save you. I, yeah. <laughs> well, what if it's a nightmare and they, they're not waking up on their own? Well, uh, I actually have some uh, information here that may makes you... May want... <laughs> Can we cut and start over? <laughs> that may make you want to uh, think twice about waking them up. Oh, you're not supposed to? I have a bunch of experts' thoughts here on what different animals might uh, usually would be found dreaming about, which is a weird thing to say, because if you ask, what do humans usually dream about? There's no usually... I mean, I guess there's a few typical dreams, like you're falling or what you wake up somewhere in your underwear, or not wake up, but you're somewhere important in your underwear, stuff like that. Uh, but... Uh, for animals, there's a few typical dreams they seem to have as well. For How do they find this out? Uh, brain, uh, by taking... Uh, well, why don't we read along okay. and find out? <laughs> uh, so for, this is Kenneth Britton. He's a professor emeritus uh, of neurobiology, physiology, and behavior at UC Davis. He says, if you want, want to know about rats, yeah, rats typically dream of running through mazes. Uh, that They started uh, recording activity in the rat's hippocampus uh, that replays sequences observed as they ran the day through. This was done uh, at MIT. Yeah, but that's only rats who they have. Like, that's not like free rats. They're used to running around in mazes. Sure. At least as far as we know. Yeah, weird. Uh, They also kept track of birds. Birds dream of singing. Oh, wow. So I guess it's starting to okay, sound like things cute. just <laughs> I don't believe a word of this. You don't believe this? I don't believe cute. it. Why not? <laughs> because if they can figure out what they're dreaming about, uh-huh. then can they figure out what they're thinking about? Or talk. Yeah, say Yeah, so essentially, so. like, why, why are we doing studies about what they're dreaming, and why aren't we just asking them questions? Like, what? Are you happy? They can't speak. Ask Jimmy. But what if they can figure out what they're thinking? How can they not figure out what they're like? Because thinking? you can monitor their brain. They can figure out what you're thinking I'm about sorry. too. If they wanted Hudson, to, though, come they're on. They're like, hey, look at this brainwave. That's up. Oh, the bird's singing. Well, you, you don't know what the brainwave is. Do, yes, you do. <laughs> they can figure he's out. A oh, professor he's professor emeritus. He's, run, hey. he's running around in a maze right now, but we can't figure out if he likes his food or not. Oddly enough, I'm sorry, Hudson. You're the one the other day who started questioning dinosaurs, oh, and yeah. you're coming in and be like, no, but this is totally. Believable. The birds are, they're singing in their sleep, but that's what they're doing. Well, this honestly. is something happening now. You can see, you can, you can put, we can do this for any one of us. You can put it on one of our dogs. You get a brain scanner thing. You hook it up, all the suction cups or whatnot, or a helmet. This I don't isn't know a movie. It this isn't a movie. No, it's Come a real on. thing. It's well, a real tell thing. Me, tell me about dogs and cats. Right. Yeah, let's they, see what they're, they're uh, thinking about, I guess. So this is Catherine A. Hout. She's a professor emeritus as well, behavior medicine, Cornell University College of Veterinary Medicine. I think she would know. I don't know. That's a lot of <laughs> fluffy stuff there. Yeah, She's we're not so sure. In. Now, Catherine. this one, uh, on the surface, is obvious. Dogs and cats seem to be running in their sleep. Well, yeah, you can tell because their legs are moving. But, uh, well, she even says that. Sometimes you can actually see that. But they also seem to have aggressive dreams uh, when they see muscle activity that's not usually present mm-hmm. during uh, their sleep. It shows that they're acting aggressively in their dreams, as in chasing other animals, uh, hunting, or fighting. Interesting. So, and that's why they say, uh, there's the old phrase, uh, let sleeping dogs lie. That's because if they're acting aggressive in their dream, maybe they're chasing something, and then you wake them up suddenly, 
they might continue that action briefly because they're just, you know, they're still ah, continuing on what's going on the sure. dream. So watch out. If you see your dog running in its dream, just let it be. Well, it, cinnamon, might, it might hunt you. Cinnamon was doing that last night, and Cinnamon had chose to sleep next to my feet, and it was annoying <laughs> <laughs> to have just this kicking thing. So I did wake her up. Well, I can't and blame you for that. They say horses tend to run in their sleep as well. So basically, they're just saying they're running in their sleep for most animals. It's, it's interesting that uh, for humans, again, like our dreams usually... Uh, they're wild stuff. Like it's just crazy stuff that wouldn't normally happen in everyday life. A lot of the time, for animals, it sounds like it's just pretty mostly mundane. Although I guess maybe if you own a dog, uh, it's probably not typically hunting and fighting things. So I guess that's a, it's a little wild for it. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, we think you believe it. And we, and what you guys? You <laughs> so you don't think we're? There's no way to know what they're doing. Well, I just don't understand if there's a way to figure out what they're dreaming. How can we not figure out what they're thinking? That's all I'm wondering. You can't figure out what they're thinking. Then why don't we ask them? That's what I want to know. I want to study it's expensive. done. You got br- You got to get a brain well, scanner. Then why don't we do the dream and not the thinking? I'd rather know what they're thinking. <laughs> all Isaiah is saying is he wants to be able to talk to his dog. I just want to be able to talk to Jim. I don't care about what he's dreaming. He wants to, he wants I just want to understand doing. what the heck he's thinking. Well, we can tell. Collectively, what he's what a dog might be thinking generally most of the time. No, we need to understand. I can't figure it out, oddly (laughs) enough. If they keep talking long enough, they're bound to say something that you agree with. The riot with Hudson and Nikki on Radio U. Uh, I love this story, this research out of uh, China, where. You know, we know that nostalgia is big business nowadays. Mm. Only 90 kids remember things and things of that nature. Bringing back all the old TV shows. But it turns out that's not just all for fun and games. It actually may have a a healing some kind of effect on you, believe it or not. Listen to this. Uh, So this is some research they did uh, at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, They had a group of people where they hooked them up to a machine that uh, it was a heat generator on their arm. Mm -hmm. So it would give them small amounts of pain. Uh, And then they separated, you know, these people into two different groups. For one of the groups, they would show them pictures of what they call uh, an average childhood, like popular cartoons from uh, from years ago, schoolyard games, uh, old style candy that they might have had growing up. Then for... Another group, for the other group, they would just show them, uh, like, current stuff. Yeah. Uh, And what they found was, for the people that were shown the old school uh, images, it actually helped them, uh, as they were hooked up to an fMRI machine, it measured their brain activity, and they were actually able to deal with the pain. It lessened the pain from that heat generator on their arm if they were looking at pictures from that reminded them of growing up really? versus looking at pictures from uh, modern times. Dude, I would love that. You're like, hey, you want to sign up for this study? Because normally that gets you some extra cash. Yeah, right. And then you find out, oh, we're just going to burn your arm. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Just I, mild, mild it's, burns. It's a placebo burn. We right. might not actually be burning you. I, I think that's really weird. But and and kinda, don't worry. <laughs> we'll show you cartoons to yes, help with the burns. It's fine. It kind of makes sense because then you're personally more invested in what you're watching is taking your mind off of it. Yeah, it it, uh, it also says that just the idea of yearning for a simpler time, it says it when reduces... When you weren't being burned. Right, yeah. <laughs> when I was a child, oh. I don't remember being burned at all. Uh, it reduces your brain activity. Uh, the the nostalgia that comes rushing in yeah. reduces your brain activity, which in a may, it makes it sound like it makes you stupider, but uh, it also During makes you able to deal with pain more often. So I guess, now they, they're talking about this in terms of very light pain. Mm-hmm. You, like if, you're, if you need to get stitches or something, don't know if flipping on a cartoon you watched when you were a kid is going to help you all that much. But it can be a distraction, and they're yeah. just saying that it might be better unless the study people don't realize you had a very traumatic childhood. Yeah, that's and right. And you don't want to remember any of you it. you got to really pick and choose carefully Who's doing what, that? Those, uh, what those old nostalgia well, images you are, uh, you're going to go with. That's kind of interesting. So they say, like, especially if you have uh, maybe drug addiction in your past and you go to the doctor or you have a surgery or even for people who have, like, anxiety, you go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. Someone else might be able to handle it, but you might have a more difficult time staying pain free without the narcotics or stuff that's provided. So it's a way to show that there are other alternatives to keep you feeling less pain while you're going through something. Yeah, that uh, that's uh, obviously there's it seems to be some good applications that can be Mm -hmm. put towards and uh, 
it also can be used as an excuse for when <laughs> TV studios and uh, movie studios and they're like, we're bringing back Friends because it'll make you feel good. Sure. It'll help you deal with the pain. Well, imagine if you, I would love it at the dentist. Like if they just put a screen right in front of your face yeah. you could, or just let you be on your phone. And you can watch Smurfs or something. Mm, or if you're waiting for the doctor. You? I didn't grow up with Smurfs. <laughs> I never watched them. I they have know. no fond Just picking memories. something old. But like if you wait in the doctor's office for the many hours, they let you sit there. Uh-huh. But then they also also have the no phone sign. Oh, you know, yeah. you, you could be distracting yourself. Yeah, the, you're, 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 it's just your way of coping. We've done you a favor by selecting the best of the worst and compiling it all in one place. Riot Podcast Radio U. Today's an important day. It is. It is Fat Tuesday, but it's also something else. It's, uh, well, Isaiah, why don't you share? It is Jim's birthday Yay. today. Jim the dog. So that's uh, Isaiah's dog. Is he one today? He is one today. It's his golden birthday. What are you going to do? Uh, we're probably going to go to the dog park is the plan as of now. It's a pretty nice day out, so it'll be a good day for that. And then later on, we may have some of his uh, dog friends over <gasps> oh. if he behaves, but we're not sure yet. And then I have a little, I'm going to get some treats and stuff, probably a bone or something. And then he uh, has a new collar that's coming uh, via Amazon right now online. So, so it's a big day for him. A, you don't feed him uh, table food, though, so you're not going to no do like, chance. a dinner? He doesn't get any, like, he can't get any food food, no. You don't want to give him a fish sandwich or something? No. Because <laughs> he would just never, he's already bad enough. I've never given him human food, and he still begs as if I do every day. So yeah. if I ever let him taste it, then he'll just be relentless. Well, no, maybe not. Idea. Maybe if you finally give him that, he'll leave you alone. That's not how that no, works. Uh, <laughs> what if, uh, what if? Uh, maybe not today because it's his birthday, but uh, you find some kind of food that you know he would hate. Oh, and yeah. And you give him that, and then maybe he won't beg anymore. And yeah, that's, that's never a bad idea. That. That's so mean. It's his birthday. Give yeah, him something. Not today. Not Just today. Give him I, said, I did. Hey, I said, I wait did. till tomorrow. I felt bad this morning when I was like putting him in his crate. I was like, happy birthday, Jim. <laughs> and then I'm putting him in his crate and like, all right, I'll see you later. And Jim's well, like, I can't believe I have to be in my crate on my home, birthday. home, and it's not so bad, but you should do, if anybody has, like, if you do something for your dog, if you text in, 8772 Radio U. You could do like, you could make him doggy cookies. You could make him a doggy birthday cake. See, all this or make things. Yeah. I you think buying buy it. it, yeah. That would be a better option. I, I was kind of surprised, Nikki. You didn't bring in like a doggy a something. Gift? for Yeah, for Jim. You know, I you forgot You got him something it. for Christmas. <laughs> I did. I forgot. Well, Christmas is different than your birthday, you know. Everybody gets something for Christmas. Listen, I don't want all of our dogs to expect me to get them something for birthdays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because then, <laughs> then when it's my birthday, I'm going to expect Nikki to give me a gift yeah, as well. that's a good point. <laughs> Only for animals. Yeah, just for the dogs. <laughs> but I made um, doggy cookies one time, and it's not too hard. It's just like peanut butter and some, uh, I don't know, yeah, dry goods. Oh, there's all kinds of YouTube videos on that. Yeah. I've never done it. Too yeah. much work. You got to make Jim something today. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll probably go to like the, the pet shop and then pick him up something special. Probably like a bone or something. That's what he that's what he really likes. So I'll get him one of those, and then he's going to hang out with all of his dog friends, which is Aww. what he really wants to do. And the best gift would be let him have one free pooper pee on the floor. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> we don't He'd yell love at that, him. though. He yeah. would love that. You make him that little. Remember, you used to make your mom the cards of like one free hug. Oh, yeah. yeah. One free, I'll do the dishes. You give Jim a one free pooper pee card. I'm like, one free poop without getting spanked. Here you go. <laughs> He's not in trouble. So if anybody has any other fun ideas for Jim, it's his birthday today. And if you're like, Jim, that is Isaiah's dog. Yeah. And dogs have birthdays, Which explains too. why he's pooping and peeing in the house. <laughs> Actually, he's one year old. It doesn't explain it, but it's no, okay. No, it explains it. I know he's not supposed to anymore. <laughs> Store at room temperature. Now that they can do. The Riot Radio U. Uh, the early reviews for Batman are out. The review embargo seemed to lift uh, to, to have lifted yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so far, if you just want to go purely off of Rotten Tomatoes score, we're talking 86%. Pretty good. I feel like that's pretty good, but I don't know. I thought it'd be like 100%. Because yeah. everybody's been really waiting for the Batman. And I feel like that's sometimes a superhero sort of movie that can get a higher score. Yeah. Compared to, like, uh, review-wise. Yeah. Because sometimes you get reviews from, you know, official reviewers, and they can be pretty harsh on stuff like yeah, this. Yeah, for sure. Where the average moviegoer just, we love it. Yeah, there's uh, there's definitely a style of movie that, that this is made for critics and hopefully appeals to regular people as well mm-hmm. uh, whereas whereas some some movies are made more for one or the other uh, but the reviews for Batman do seem pretty good uh, uh, 
here's one. Let me point out the one that uh, has me very excited. Okay. This is Uproxx's Mike Ryan. Here's his quote. The Batman is a movie fully embracing its present and not looking forward to what everything might mean five movies down the line. Oh, you're happy about that? At just under three (laughs) hours in length, yes, it's long, but it's self-contained and also rare for a Batman movie. Batman is actually the main character. Oh. Wow. What do we think, Isaiah? Are we excited? I'm not much of a Batman fan, I would say. Yeah, you wouldn't be. So for me... (laughs) But you would. (laughs) Not so much uh, excitement for me. Not even hearing that? But you were so excited about the Morbius thing? Yeah. I wasn't wasn't saying I was that excited about the Morbius thing, but... You said you would see Morbius I would be more likely to see Morbius than I would Batman 100%. Really? Yeah. You're not just saying that to be controversial? No, I don't really like Batman, if I'm being honest. Okay, well... Yeah, but have you seen the trailer? I don't even like this stuff, but you still like Batman. Have you seen the reviews? There's literally one Batman movie that I liked, which was Batman vs. Superman, and yet again, he was not (laughs) the main character. Oh, man. I'll have to find the review. Someone, they calculated how long Batman's in the rain in this movie. Oh, yeah. And they said he's always in the rain. And he's <laughs> two very, and a half of the well, two hours and 45 minutes. It is a long movie. It's very sad and very, you know, emotional. Yeah, the, so before anybody goes and sees it, uh, one of the main things that's coming across here is that, yes, it's a superhero movie, but it, if you're thinking it's going to be like Spider-Man or Iron Man or something like that, it's definitely not the fun type it's a lot more in fact or you know just that typical style it is very much uh film noir detective hard-boiled detective type Dark. thing yeah so uh it's not gonna have it's not gonna have the comic bookiness to it that we are co- more expecting with the marvel movies May, you know maybe more think joker style if you watched Joker sure. back a couple of years ago, which I really liked. so well, It's hard because when you look at reviews, at least on one of the main sites, we the one side's like, oh, it's moody, it's too much, we don't like it. And then the other side's like, this is the best ever. Yeah. So it's that type of movie, you just got to go and see if you like it. Yeah. It's, uh, Unless you're Isaiah. Yeah. Hey, I'll still see it at some uh, point. I don't know. <laughs> Possibly down the line. After you see Morbius. <laughs> yeah. You got to have your priorities in line. This just shows that we need to appreciate everybody's movie styles. Uh-huh. We're all different and we all want to see certain things and then there's me who just doesn't want to see anything at all. So. There you go. <laughs> but even you sound like you might see the Batman. No, I would. If it was streaming, I would totally well, totally hey, watch it. It's going to be on HBO Max one day. Yeah, but I think I'm going to cancel HBO no, Max. No, you have to no, keep it at least until the Batman comes out. No. Nope, I'm just going to move into your login. So there you I will, I'll share it with you. You know, Dune's coming back on to HBO Max soon. I also didn't see that. I know, that's why I'll share it with you. I will Even see if the, you cancel. I will see the Batman first. Why pay for so many streaming services that you don't really care about? When you can not really care about the riot for free. Radio U. Congratulations to Zach, who got today's Wordle and six guesses. <laughs> Texted in. You guys are still cute. You send in a lot of Wordles each day. Have you gotten your? Uh, have you gotten in on Wordle yet? Have you even tried it, Nikki? No, I never got in. I uh, should have gotten in before it got sold. Yeah. Because then, if you come in later, it feels like you were just jumping in yeah, on it. Yeah, you're just a Johnny come lately. And uh, it feels like a lot of people are so mad when it's harder now, or it's just they blame it on the sale of it. Yeah, a lot so, of people. Uh, I think it's just. You know, it gives you something to complain about, something to talk about, and it'll be, uh, I don't know, you don't see a lot of people like me, like I'll say on the air, but uh, there's not a lot of people on Twitter going, I don't see what the big deal is, Wordle's not so hard. Now that's what Hudson says every morning. Yeah. (laughs) He doesn't feel like it's gotten any harder. I don't think it's gotten any harder. Uh, My streak remains unbroken. Mm. Uh, I I missed a few days where I just forgot to do it, but I've never missed one. Sure. Uh, But... It turns out, uh, and, and and I'd like to point out, never cheated. Uh, it's all on the up and up, but uh, that doesn't mean that other people aren't out there cheating. Uh, I have some data here from a website called Word Finder X, which uh, I don't know if that was if that was created just to help people cheat at Wordle or what it is, but uh, they say the cheating on Wordle has gone up 195%. That's a lot. 196%. Since the New York Times bought it. Yeah, which was uh, which was back in January. People have been, uh, I mean, obviously the game's popularity continues to seem to grow, but uh, with the popularity growing and with people thinking that the words are more difficult recently, 
it has also led people to uh, also want to keep their streak unbroken. Yeah. Uh, but they don't have the mental acuity to be able to solve the puzzle on their own. They need Google's help. So the time that most people are most likely to cheat on Wordle, uh-huh. 7 to 8 a.m. Mm, because they want to get in early, they right? They want to get in early. Yeah. So you cheat early, and I guess you're cheating often. And apparently, I don't know what you can attribute this to, mm-hmm. but the state that cheats the most at Wordle New Hampshire. Really? Yeah. What do you think that's about? I don't know. I never understand sometimes when you you learn about something, you're like, why? I wonder why. Yeah, maybe maybe New Hampshire, the people there, they just, uh, they know the, in uh, neighboring states, Massachusetts and yeah. Connecticut, you know, they think they're better than us in New Hampshire, but we're, <laughs> New Hampshire, New Hampshire, and we're going to, and we're going to prove them wrong. We're going to beat them, get the word well, right before they do. That'll show them. Listen to I the other know. states who are most likely to cheat. It really is all that same stuff. Yeah. New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Vermont, uh-huh. Washington, D.C., uh, Massachusetts, and Maine. Well, I wonder what that, what what that is, is it just a competition between all the states, so they're all trying to cheat uh, to, to outdo each other? Maybe. Or is it something about being on the East Coast where, you know, because Wordle resets at midnight, I don't, like, what could it be? I don't know. Maybe those are the only ones playing. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. So that they have a be. greater chance of cheating. Well, uh, if you, I guess if you're cheating at Wordle, you're not alone, but you shouldn't. Come on. If you have to cheat to figure it out, hey, let what's them the cheat fun? If they want to. What's the fun? It's not hurting them. It's not hurting anybody else. Wordle's- if they want to keep playing, they can do that. Yeah, but what if it's making your friends feel bad? Uh, it's not. I think deep down, does anybody really care? Unless you're from. Uh, yeah, have you wait, seen. What was it? New Unless Hampshire. you were from New Hampshire. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen that TikTok where the guys, uh, you know, hey, son, have you seen Kim? Kim got the wordle in three guesses. Hey, hey, Bob, across the street, did you see Kim got the wordle in three guesses? I He's just seen telling that. everybody, <laughs> and it is true. I don't know why we're all posting our school. I, I, I don't. I just talk about it on a nationally broadcast radio show. Everybody likes to that talk I about it. I haven't lost my streak, but I'm not posting my score every day. Come on. And remember, if you're going to cheat, uh, between seven to eight a.m. is cheating time. Yeah, that's the cheating hour. <laughs> The riot promise is that they'll always have an opinion on everything they talk about. But that doesn't mean any of their opinions will make sense. This is The Riot on Radio U. Of course, we've been keeping our eyes on the uh, the problems in Ukraine. It is just, it's, uh, it, it was weird to see, uh, you know, there's all the horrible war news. And mm-hmm. then there's all like the inspirational or kind of, even with the war, there's like the goofy stories, mm-hmm. especially about the president of Ukraine. Did you know he's uh, the voice of the, uh, in the Ukrainian version of Paddington Bear? No, really? He voiced Paddington Bear. I knew he was an actor, but. <laughs> yeah, he was on Dancing with the Stars. He was Paddington Bear. It's the same movie. Sure. It's just he did the voice for Paddington you know, in the Ukrainian language. Yeah, no, I I saw some of that and I spent time uh, the last few days. They call it War Talk. Yeah. So it's TikTok, but it's the the war videos. Uh-huh. And oh, I don't want to watch that. Well, no, it's so weird. Like the one side is, is like you said, it's the the glamorization of that side. And yeah. then there's the, the heroism. Yeah. And then there's the others. And it's, it's very weird to uh, absorb all that. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely, I mean, there's only one side. It's a horrible thing, mm-hmm. but it's, uh, uh, it's weird how they're still we're still able uh, as news and as people to find the good uh, and the fun stuff even about war in a way. Uh, but I don't know if anybody else has uh, either caught themselves doing this or had somebody say this to you. It's like how dare, how dare you complain? How dare you think your problems right now mm. are are anything with what people in Ukraine are doing? I thought I've thought that to myself several times in the last week. I've been like, what can you really complain? And uh, the truth is, like it's it's very valuable perspective. To see how big problems and and to be clear, there's problems going like if you're ever measuring up your problems against the rest of the world, you're probably never at that point. You're never going to be able to complain. Uh, And while I don't necessarily recommend going out and complaining all the time to other people, that doesn't mean that your problems aren't real. Mm -hmm. Just because somebody else also has a problem that's bigger doesn't mean that your problem is important. But here's what's crazy about God. Uh, One of the things that makes God God is that he is able to simultaneously care and do stuff about, worry about, concern himself with what's going on in Ukraine and all the issues there, but also care about whatever your thing is, even if it's pretty small, even if it's just your feelings or whatever. And, and you know, that's not small to God. Jesus cares about every problem going on in the world at the very moment, including problems going on specifically in your world. 
that uh, that if you told somebody else, they might be like, ah, hey, what's the big deal? How can you complain with this going on or this going on? Or how can you even complain? That's not even that big of a deal. God's not going to say that. Jesus is going to say, yes, it matters. And I care about it. I care about what's going on across the ocean. I care about what's going on with you. I'm going to help you with it. Jesus is ready to do that for you. And all you need to do is ask, say, hey, God, uh, I've got problems. Uh, they might not seem to have big to everybody else. In the scheme of things, they might not be huge, but I know you care. And I want help with them because they're big to me. God's going to help you. If you want to know more, check out RadioU.com slash free gift. Hudson, Nikki, The Riot on Radio U. Radio U. You may now on TikTok find us lo- uh, uploading videos up to 10 minutes long. That was the big I announcement yesterday. I shrieked when I saw that yesterday. Did you really? I was so excited. In happiness? I was just so excited. And you're like, why? Because I know personally when you watch TikTok, it changes it to like a potential long form at 10 minutes. Like yeah. that's not short anymore. Um, so it becomes like a long form video experience, which not everybody's crazy about. Mm-hmm. Like if you just scroll through the For You page, you don't want to see 10 minute options. Yeah. That's not fun. Fun. But in the world of Radio U official, <laughs> <laughs> let me just uh, take you over to our TikTok page. Yeah, uh, we do some clips from our show, and they're like short versions of our clips. Uh-huh. And to edit those to the three minutes it was, yeah, was a pain, and I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the problem. We usually talk for just over three minutes. Yeah, <laughs> which means that we would have to cut them down. And I don't know if if you ever upload videos to TikTok. It doesn't really have the greatest uh, video editing capabilities. And I, I mean, I wouldn't even begin to know where to do video editing myself mm. uh, that wasn't on TikTok. So, uh, yeah, from Radio U's perspective, uh, that now we can upload videos that are more than three minutes long. That, uh, it, like, when I think about it myself, I, I like listening to our show. But at the same time, I think if, there, if somebody else is uploading on TikTok a three minute video, <laughs> The uh, you know over three minute video sure. the odds are stacked against them uh-huh. that I will make it through the three minutes. I know, but we hope you with ours. Yeah, will make the exception. At least it's an option. Yeah, it's oh, an option I'm so on excited. there. It won't be most of the videos, but but to see people, uh, to, the idea that we're going to get ten minute videos just coming up on the for you page. That's not exciting. Well, you know, we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. But for I mean, ours at Radio U Official, I'm just so glad we don't have to edit those down like we had to. Yeah, and there's no uh, there's no rule against just swiping up when you see a video that True. where the little bar at the bottom is actually not even moving because the video is <laughs> so long. I mean, it is nice for some. It depends on what side of TikTok you land on. Yeah. Because for some, man, they, they don't need to go any further. It could be a really short, quick one. Yeah. And for others, they really try to pack too much much in uh-huh. to what was the three minutes. So it does not say like if you go and will I upload a riot short today at Radio U Official and will it be already 10 minutes? Yeah, I haven't done it yet, so I, I don't wondering. know, but we'll see. They say they're rolling it out, but it is interesting too when uh, everyone else is zigging, the TikTok is zagging. Mm-hmm. All the other social media sites now have been trying to copy TikTok, uh, what TikTok has been, and making shorter and shorter, you know, like Instagram reels and stuff, making short video content. And TikTok's like, we'd like to do the opposite yeah. now. <laughs> so I don't know if that'll work for them, but you know what? It doesn't seem like uh, anybody's going to stop using TikTok anytime soon, whether they have to s- skip through 10 minute videos or not. You know, it is uh, also. They have the fast forward options. So. I know, but it would be funny for like, hey, hang on, I just got a TikTok I got to watch real quick, and they're like, oh, it'll just be a few, you know, you a think few, fifteen right? seconds, and they're like, oh yeah, I'll see you in ten minutes. Yeah, <laughs> that's enough of that. For more riot content, head to riot.radiou.com.